Hello and welcome to the next lecture in the course on Introduction to Computer Net and Network Performance Analysis Using Queuing Systems. I am Professor Varsha Apte and I am a faculty member in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering IIT Bombay. So today we are going to start something new uh, which is closed queuing systems. So far we have been learning um, open queuing systems. What does that mean? That the source uh, as to like where does the request come from really and where is it going? This is not explicitly modeled. All we care about is that there is some kind of a rate of arrival, some lambda rate into the server, there is some service rate and then we have various metrics based on uh, these, this kind of uh, focus of the system. Uh, but in some cases it is actually uh, important to model the sources of where a request is coming from. Uh, for example, um, if you are modeling uh, let us say a lab in which uh, say some 50 students are sitting and interacting with the course website or if you are modeling um, a call center where there are some 200 agents uh, uh, creating uh, complaints or uh, sales tickets or something like that on a particular web application. Um, and there is one more very interesting um, example as to in a let us say in a computer this is just representing a computer, there is a CPU, suppose this represents a CPU and uh, I am just going to draw something like this for threads, these are threads. Okay. So, uh, this is CPU, let us say there is also of course IO in the computer there is some secondary storage um, and there is network right there is some network uh, happening. So, if this is uh, some sort of a uh, some sort of a thread pool of a web server for example, these threads what they are going to be doing is they are going to be in a kind of a loop where they use the CPU for some time okay. then they are done then they make an IO call either to the network or to the disk and then they uh, basically have to uh, wait for IO. Right, they have to wait for IO. Um, so, uh, let me use, use a different color here. So, this thread uh, will be here for some time. Okay, then then it will uh, be, uh, go away from the CPU and be uh, here or be here, be here. Meaning, it is it is going to stay, of course, just in the computer, but it is going to be uh, waiting for an IO request or waiting. Uh, waiting for a disk IO request or waiting for a network IO request, it will be uh, leaving the CPU and then uh, it will again uh, finish this and come back to the CPU. So, there is a fixed number of threads often uh, in a web server, there is a fixed number of threads and they are going to be in this sort of a CPU burst and wait uh, for IO loop. Um, and here also you can, this also you can think of as a system where you are modeling the source, the source uh, of requests coming to CPU is this is the thread pool, this is a source um, and the, in the sync also where, where does the request go after it leaves the CPU it also goes back to the thread pool um, in a state where it is either doing IO or, or uh, disk IO or network IO. So, uh, whenever there is a fixed number of uh, requests uh, that come to a certain resource, use that resource for some time then leave that resource um, and then are idle or doing something else but are going to come back to that resource. This system is considered closed. The reason it is called closed is because if you think of it as if you think of this whole thing, we represent it like this with the with this kind of picture. This is the source and actually in a way it is a sink also. This is where the requests come from. Uh, uh, this uh, to, to the server and this is where the requests go back. And why is it the source and the sync? Because these are basically the clients. In the examples that I gave here, this is either a student, student 1 to, st to student M or it is an agent 1 to agent M. Uh, or lastly it can be thread 1 to thread m. 
these are just examples the generic view is this that there is a server the server part is identical to what uh, we have seen in open queuing system there is a buffer there is a number of servers there is a service time there is c number of servers uh, only thing we actually assume in closed systems that the buffer size can always be sized to be greater than the number of uh, these these so called clients uh, because if this is known if this is fixed then why would you make the buffer size less than this uh, you can uh, of course uh, advanced models will have some kind of a uh, can allow for the buffer size being smaller than m but uh, in our uh, uh, course here we will only be studying systems which make the simplifying assumption where the buffer size is assumed to be greater than m so uh, so this is the basic structure that there are these there is this station there is a client station okay and this is the server station or we can call it the client node or the server node okay at the client uh, station uh, the, it models basically the users uh, often they are actually human users who are issuing the request uh, so if it's a student or an agent they may be having uh, they may at their client they probably have a browser on which they are clicking on the link uh, and when that click on the link happens then the request goes to the server then the server fulfills the request and then the response goes back to the user. Um, if it is a thread then uh, whenever the thread actually is done with its IO or its, its wait for IO that is when it, it goes and uses the CPU and then comes back and uh, sits in the thread pool basically. So, this is this is basically either modeling uh, the set of students or agents or a thread pool and there can of course be various examples where this sort of a scenario is, is done we will be looking at examples okay. So, again the source and sync of requests which is the users are explicitly modeled the users are in a think then request and response loop with the server what is the think uh, these times where uh, after a response is received and the time when uh, the the user or the agent or the uh, student or the agent or the thread is um, is in a way idle uh, before they send the next request uh, that is called think time because it is actually not an idle time uh, in the example of let us say a student uh, with the uh, interacting with the course website or the call center agents interacting with the complaints website uh, what is actually happening is you are processing a response okay. you process in your mind or you can say read or think about the response. Okay. So, if I click on a website uh, some page comes to me I am going to spend some time reading that page before I click on the next link uh, that reading time is called think time. Okay. You can say that it may not really be think time it may be representing a read time uh, in case of threads actually obviously threads are not people so they are not thinking uh, what they are doing is they are actually somewhere else they are, wait, they are waiting for some IO with some network or disk IO so they are with respect to the CPU. Uh, they are doing something else that is all they are just uh, not uh, issuing a request or they are not actually uh, waiting for the waiting to use the CPU they are preoccupied with something else. The same thing when the student or a call center agent gets a response they are preoccupied with reading it when they re finish reading it they will issue the next request ok. So, this is very important the users are in a think request response loop with the server meaning at the end of your thinking period you issue a request then you get a then uh, the server takes its time to send back the response. Once the response comes you again send uh, go into a think mode meaning you are reading the request uh, reading the response uh, and then you send the request ok. So, if you think of a, a, a user timeline let us draw a user timeline here. The user uh, let us say which starts with sending a request uh, 
uh, when it sends a request then there is going to be this let us say this much time in getting the response. Okay. This is the time that the server needs to send the response then the user is going to think the user may think for a more longer time okay. then uh, again issue the request okay. request is issued here. The request issuing uh, activity is not uh, assumed to be taking any time you just click on the link that is the issuing of the request that is considered uh, sort of instantaneous and then uh, again you wait for the response and this loop continues. Okay. Uh, some important assumptions for our uh, sort of simple model uh, is that you only issue one request at a time. Uh, this may not be very realistic because when you are browsing a website we often click on many links at the same time, we open many tabs. Uh, so, those are of course advanced models for the purpose of a simple model to study in this course. We assume that the only one request is issued at a time. Okay, so, this is the basic model. Uh, the uh, parameters of this model are basically the, uh, the number of uh, clients okay, then that is usually we denote by m. So, that is this. Uh, then there is a think time we denote by h. Okay. Uh, the other parameters are like I said at the server side the parameters are the same we have C servers, uh, we have the tau is the service time mu is equal to 1 over tau um, and here we have explicitly shown that the arrival rate is no longer a parameter for a uh, closed queuing system and we are also not considering a buffer size. We can consider a buffer size uh, for advanced models, but in our uh, examples of the uh, the, the models that we study in this course we are not considering that. So, uh, for this system again we ask a question as to what are going to be the metrics. Uh, in the metrics case again there is uh, basically no difference you are again going to be uh, interested in the same things uh, what is the response time that is the most important uh, what are the user you know when the user clicks on the link when is uh, the user going to get a response. Um, then uh, waiting time how much did the request uh, spend in the queue waiting, what is the throughput of the server, these two are going to be important to the user, the throughput uh, is going to be important to the uh, uh, server system owner, similarly the server utilization is going to be uh, it is a system metric which is important to the system owner. Uh, of course, number of uh, customers in the queue and the queue length these are uh, related metrics that uh, the system owner is going to be interested in. Uh, one clarification of course also of one assumption is that although there seems to be some kind of a uh, uh, travel here of this response back to the uh, queuing station here and the request going from here to here, in reality there might be a network on which uh, this request travels. Uh, but in our again the simplistic uh, models that we are going to study in this course we do not assume any network bottleneck or any network delay. Okay. Whenever the server finishes the uh, request basically in 0 time it goes back to the uh, user. Okay. So, this is uh, some of the uh, metrics and the assumptions. Um, this is summarizing the metrics uh, as usual we have number of jobs in the system that is going to be this part okay, n here. Uh, Q will be over here just this part, uh, waiting time uh, we know response time has usual definitions, throughput, uh, server utilization. Um, R cycle is a new metric uh, for closed systems, R cycle is actually the time for a request to do a whole cycle. Okay. So, we can pick any point, we can say the point at which a request was issued, okay. request issued. So, this will include response time and then since this time is 0 it, in, it, it includes response time and then there will have to be think time. Okay. So, basically the cycle time is always going to be equal to response time plus think time. Okay. Again I have explicitly shown that since we are not a modeling limited buffer we are not considering blocking probability or loss probability at the buffer. Okay. <coughs> So, uh, the question is uh, how do we calculate this. Okay? So, we are going to uh, take a simple example because it is always easy to understand things uh, in terms of an example. Um, suppose a single threaded uh, server it could be a web server or something is running on a uh, one core CPU. 
ok. So, we have a single so basically this is just to make it a single server system ok and suppose uh, there are 180 clients again this could be students in a computer lab ok. This could be some kind of a uh, course management server ok. So, the student there are 180 students in the lab they click on the link and then the, the web server does some processing uh, for that processing let us say the service time is 5 milliseconds and sends back a response. Once a response comes let us assume uh, whatever it is that the students are doing they, they need only 1 second to read uh, the response and then they send the next request again ok. So, this depends on the setting what is the realistic think time sometimes you might need many seconds or minutes to read and, and process the response in your mind. Sometimes you could just be doing something routine and you are just clicking on the link waiting for the page to, to load and then you just uh, click on the link again ok. So, um, this is just uh, the example and we want to find all our usual metrics the throughput, CPU utilization, waiting time, response time, queue length at server and number at server. So, uh, the remember the various laws we have at our disposal right, we know we know utilization law, we know Little's law, ok. These are the two main uh, laws we have, um, question is how do we use how do we reason about it here right we uh, we don't know there is no such thing as an arrival rate ok because the arrival rate uh, now is no longer fixed the arrival rate here uh, depends on how many users are thinking versus how many users are uh, at the server either waiting or being serviced ok. For example, out of these 180 clients suppose the server currently is, is uh, uh, some so this service time is just an average let right this service time is just an average suppose lot of requests with the large service times are, are have, have ended up getting queued here and so um, out of 180 almost 100 requests are queued here and only uh, 80 clients are thinking. So, if 80 clients are thinking uh, the, the rate at which in that in that time that we can expect uh, uh, requests to be coming here will be very different uh, as opposed to suppose uh, only 20 requests were here. only 20 requests were here and uh, 160 clients were here. So, if there are 160 clients about to uh, finish thinking and send a request that expected arrival rate will be much higher. So, the point is that the arrival rate is not constant ok. So, the standard tools that we had where we could write that utilization law is equal to throughput multiplied by tau and then for an open system we could just write it as arrival rate multiplied by tau. Uh, this basically this method is not available to us because we do not know what is uh, small lambda. So, uh, a completely different trick and very interesting approach is used to model uh, closed systems and I uh, will show this yeah. So, uh, what is done is uh, as follows ok. Uh, there is a very innovative definition of a little slaw region. So, the little slaw region is drawn like this where you are drawing uh, this kind of a funny shape where uh, you you just make a little gap here ok. This is the shape here I will just draw it over in this shape again. This is the shape and you are doing like this here. So, that uh, there is a bit of a gap here and what this represents is that a request that leaves the server uh, briefly leaves the system and inst almost instantaneously enters again, instantaneously exits 
and enters the system. So, this is because you want to have some kind of a, a, a throughput defined if you want to uh, apply Little's law. For Little's law you need some region in which something is coming and something is going. But if you look at this whole region you know out of the 180 clients they are either thinking or they are at the server. Um, so, it, it, so, it sort of looks like nothing leaves and nothing enters um, unless you make some kind of an artificial boundary. So, this is a trick that is used um, and uh, you will see how it becomes very useful. Remember that this is kind of a uh, instantaneous entry and exit. So, you do not expect anything to be here uh, in this uh, region which is not inside this boundary for, for any particular amount of time. Okay. But uh, the flow through this region is going to be the throughput. Okay. The flow through this region, the request straight through this region is going to be the throughput. So, now for this little slow region uh, this is the throughput we have the think time here and we have the response time here. So, if you have to apply remember it is uh, I will write it in a different color here uh, the n is equal to lambda r right. Uh, so, the r here has to be the time through the region. In this case the time uh, what is the n and what is the lambda and what is the r let us think about it. Okay. Uh, if this is the boundary then the number inside this region the number inside this region is always going to be 180 right. The clients uh, are the, the requests are either at the client station in the think mode or they are at the server getting serviced. One way or the other there are going to be 180 requests inside the system remember that this is supposed to be uh, sort of a zero time transit okay? instantaneous exit and entry. So, always inside this region we know there are 180 requests. Okay? Now, this 180 uh, is going to be equal to this throughput whatever it is we do not know the throughput, but we know that this throughput is the same as this server throughput because that is the picture tells you that that the server throughput uh, is the throughput through this region. Okay. So, that is lambda and what is the time through the region? The time through the region is actually response time plus think time. right? We do not know the response time yet. So, we are just going to call it r um, and but we know the think time. The think time is given in this example as 1 second and so this becomes what we get from Little's law. We get 180 is equal to throughput through this region multiplied by response time plus think time. Okay, so, this is just uh, summarizing this the number of requests in the little slow region is 180, uh, the throughput through the region is some lambda we do not know that yet. The time through the region is uh, response time plus think time and according to Little's law the number has to be throughput multiplied by time through the region. So, this is what we get by Little's law and you can rearrange it and write it as throughput is equal to 180 divided by r plus 1. But we still do not know uh, lambda and r okay. as usual whenever we use Little's law often we end up not really knowing uh, throughput or response time, but we can relate it. So, in this case let us uh, try to first find the asymptotes maybe we can actually find the values of throughput and response time for the asymptotes. right? So, um, let us start with response time. So, this is m equal to 1 that is only one user. So, if there is only one user uh, remember there is one CPU service time is 5 milliseconds think time is 1 second. Um, so, uh, response time with only one user obviously there is never going to be any queue. So, the response time is going to be equal to the service time and this is going to be uh, equal to Uh, equal to 5 milliseconds. Okay. Now, uh, we have response time we know the think time. So, we can write the uh, throughput right. So, throughput is going to be uh, equal to 180 divided by we can write it as 0 0.005 plus 1 right this is requests per second. Now, um, we have throughput we have uh, so waiting time of course, is going to be 0 right there is only one user there is no queue waiting time is 0. A queue length at the server is also going to be 0 never going to be any queue there. Okay. Uh, CPU utilization 
basically we know it should be throughput multiplied by tau right that is utilization law always applies we know the throughput it is uh, 180 divided by 1.005 multiplied by it will be multiplied by 0 0.005 right that is the utilization. Uh, number at server, number at server we can get by uh, Little's law right, Little's law applied to this region. Remember that we got these uh, some of the values by applying Little's law to this region shown in the red, but if you apply Little's law just to the server then we can get the number at the server right. So, that will be equal to throughput multiplied by response time through the server right only through this part and that is r. So, this is equal to 180 divided by 1.005 in this case again multiplied by our service time itself just written in seconds right. So, this is basically the these are the low load asymptotes we were able to get values for everything. Now, let us check the high load asymptotes. Uh, what will happen when the number of users keeps increasing? One thing we can say no uh, is that throughput is going to go to mu as usual. We know that this should go to the maximum. If the number of users keeps on increasing, the maximum that the server can do is whatever its capacity is, which is 1 over tau. Uh, this is 1 over 0 0.005 milliseconds, that is uh, seconds uh, requests per second, 1 over 0 0.005 requests per second and that is 200 requests per second. Okay. Um, CPU utilization clearly when the server is going at its full capacity this is going to go to 1. Okay. Um, what is uh, response time number at server which of these can we write? Uh, again let us now use the Little's law as applied to the whole region. Uh, so, we know that inside this region there are going to be m clients there are going to be a large number but let us use the number m we know that the number m is always going to be inside this region um, and this is going to be equal to the throughput multiplied by r plus 1 right. So, uh, but we know here that uh, the uh, throughput uh, is going to go to 200. So, one thing we can write this as uh, r plus 1 is equal to m by lambda which is equal to m by 200. And this implies uh, that r is equal to m by 200 minus 1 right. So, uh, we are not able to get an exact number uh, and uh, because uh, clearly as um, m goes to infinity r is actually going to infinity there is no doubt about that there is not a limited buffer. So, r is going to go to infinity. Uh, so, that is not a that is not in question as m goes to infinity uh, r goes to infinity, but we know a little bit more about how it goes to infinity ok. Think about it a little bit when you can see that the function uh, of r as a function of m is like this what does that imply that implies this is linear right linear with slope 1 over 200 seconds ok. So, uh, this is a very nice uh, result we get that we can actually express r in terms of m with a very in a very simple relation. Uh, once we get r then waiting time is going to be nothing but uh, r minus uh, tau ok. So, that we can just substitute that and get uh, in this case is going to be m divided by 200 minus 1 minus 0 0.005 to just convert it to seconds. Uh, number at server again we can get uh, by throughput multiplied by r. So, that is going to be equal to 200 uh, multiplied by uh, r. So, again here we can get one or the other uh, we do not really know exactly uh, sorry so 200 multiplied by r which is equal to we can multiply this this is going to be m minus 200 yeah 
So again, uh, you can see that the number of uh, if m is going to go to infinity, then uh, the number that is queued at the server will also of course go to infinity. Okay. So, uh, it, but we know the way that it is going to go to infinity just like r we know the know a little bit more about how it goes to infinity. Similarly, we know about the throughput also. So, uh, this is uh, just uh, summarizing everything that we just learned. Uh, the throughput for the low load asymptotes 1 over 1 plus 0 0.05 you can go over all of this. Uh, we just derived all of these things just now and then the uh, as m goes to infinity all of the uh, uh, values that the uh, matrix take right. The response time is m divided by 200 minus 1 we just derived that number at server will be uh, this r multiplied by uh, throughput and so on. So, um, we will uh, just take a pause here and we will continue this uh, analysis for general values of m and we will also uh, discuss a very important metric for closed systems called saturation number. Thank you.